Twitch. Don't forget, we will have a live stream using this model and we will rig it from zero to hero using the rig to U5 add-on, correctly rigged. And the idea here is that you inherit this model, you know, totally for free. And we will also recreate the shaders in Unreal Engine, so please don't miss that. But anyways, if you are supporting Patreon, you will get this totally amazing Substance Painter Toon Shader. Of course, there have been previously created Toon Shaders in Substance Painter, but this one is just a little different. Let me show you why. I'm going to create new painter. Maybe you have a most modern one. And then I'm going to select the FBX body parts. Click to 4096 for texture dimensions. And it's going to load the FBX. Now you can see that we have three different sets for the mesh. The skin metal, the items, and also the cloth and hat. Press Ctrl Shift B, which is the shortcut to bake. Select 4096. In this occasion, I'm going to select bake all texture sets all at once. So all of the maps have been baked and although we are not going to use any of those because we're going to create tune shading, you might differ and bring smart materials into this. That's why it's always the first step to bring anything FBX and then bake the maps. And this is what we are going to do. We're going to file, import resources, and then we're going to bring the textures. All of these three things right here. So define this as texture, define also this as texture, and bring it on to this project, okay? We want to always bring it into the project. So now that we've imported this, we're going to create our first layer. So click here to make a new fill layer, texture layer. And scroll down, you will see the material color, height, roughness, metal, and normal. Just grab this one because right now we're in cloth and hat. Grab that and bring it into the base color and drop it here into this big button. Let me show you. This is a big button. If you click it there, it will be the same result, but it's easier to drag and drop it. Let it load. Okay, that's nice. Let's go into items. Let's do the same thing. Delete everything. Create a new fill layer. And this is items. So let's just grab items and again, uh, drag and drop it into this base color, which is this channel right here. Base color. It's right there. And finally, go to Skin Metal, delete this thing, create a new layer, and call it New Fill Layer, by the way, Texture Layer. Right here, you have that button right there, and then drag it and drop it. And you have all of these channels available as well. I'm going to activate them all. So here she is. But now we need to activate the Tomb Shading. Come into your SP Tomb Shader version 1. Drag it and drop it inside your resources or shelf panel. It will immediately be recognized as a shader. Select the project that you're using right now and click import. You can see it right there. To change the scene shader, click on the shader settings for the scene. And now click this big button and you have it right there. Select it from the list. And this is the basic tune shading that we can use for our projects. The idea with this tune shader is that you can have a quick idea for the setup for the shadows that you're going to be using in the game engine or in Blender. In order for you to use this, please notice I'm on skin metal and I have my texture fill layer. I'm going to switch it off. I'm going to create two new fill layers. This one is going to be called shadow and this one is going to be called background color. Select the shadow layer and come into the texture set setting tabs. Click here. We're going to create a new channel, which is going to be called user zero. It's going to be listed. You can scroll down here. User zero and switch from L32F to sRGB8. Do this because it's crucially important. Otherwise, this will not work. So make sure this sRGB8 is selected. Go back to your layers. And now, since this is a fill layer and the shadow is active, we want to activate user zero, which is the channel to work between the layer and the shadow parameters. Everything right now is set to shadow. So that's why you don't see anything. But if you right click there and add a black mask, now we can see the shader once again. And Please copy my settings for the shader so you can have a good starting point. 
and the object with this shader and the layer called the shadow is that you can paint your shadows. So I'm going to go to brushes, select basic hard. I'm going to resize it and paint the knee. I want a shadow on the knee. This is what I want. This is what I like. And that's it. I can paint most of the other shadows, if not all of the other shadows. However, I would like to stylize my, you know, character. But let's talk about the shadow settings for that. So this is the most basic setup that you can, you know, create for this. Let's talk about the shadow parameters here. So the light color will affect everything that your model has. Of course, this is the main light. The shadow color itself it right now is set to gray, but if you change it, you would expect that this changes. And this is a trade off. It will not change unless you activate in the shadow layer the channel called the color. If you activate that, then you will immediately receive the shadow color for whatever you have there. But in order for you to see that shadow color, you need to activate the shadow opacity and the shadow coefficient as well. Okay, the more you move this and the more you play with this, the more visible your shadows and light steps are going to be. Okay, I'm just going to leave that just like that. And I want to show you the shadow color itself because apparently it's not doing anything. And this is because we have the background color active as white. However, if I switch it off and then change the shadow color, you can see the shadow color reflects there. Let me switch to another, you know, more visible color. This is a green tint. And you can see it there because I have color active. You can see that the shadow color parameter is affecting the color through the object in this case, even with the with the knee activated. OK, yeah, that's that. If you don't want that, just switch off color. And obviously you need to have up some sort of background color. In this case, it's a uh, white. I'm going to set it to a higher white so you can notice the difference. Or maybe some kind of yellowish color. Or you can also activate your texture field layer back so you can see your actual textures, you know, being affected by the shadow. Okay, let's go back over here. And as you can see, that's the trade-off. If you just click user zero, if you need a shadow color to affect or in, this, or in this case influence, you can switch that to this layer. So this background color, I'm going to change it to another color. I'm going to use probably a, yeah, I think something like this can work. So that's my background color now, so you can see the shadow more clearly. And since this is the same color shadow, it's not noticeable. I'm going to switch this to somewhat a yellow color. And I'm going to dim this mostly to white. And from there, I'm going to make the shadow opacity be a little bit different. So you can notice that we're playing with this shadow color as well. If you have the color active, you can see it's affecting the zone that you painted. And therefore, if I change this again, you can see it will affect those zones. Red shadow. What other color can we pick? Maybe blue. Yeah, I think that works. And let me just make this entirely white so you can clearly see that purple color affecting that shadow. Okay, so the light intensity is set to two. We can also lower this just a little bit. And this light shadow coefficient mixes uh, how hard that light is going to go into the shadow, how much is going to affect it. If I put this shadow coefficient all the way to one, you can actually see 100% the color that we're representing against the light, against the shadow. Okay, so with these parameters, you can see that you can play with those things. And of course, you will be able to choose whatever color you want. As long as you have a white color background, you will clearly see that. If I switch this off and come back into the texture fill layer, you can see that the green is almost gone. It's not mixing with the actual texture color. It's just, you know, multiplying itself with a, with a kind of like overlay uh, determined by this shadow opacity. However, 
what you painted from here using the color is active. So this is important so that you consider how to use this blending settings that we're showing you in this video as a starting point. You need to experiment with your own setups to find out which setups work best for you. I will put this as a quick example. Uh, you remember, of course, you can, by the way, before we move on to the next topic, shader settings to shader version one, you can go back to the PBR metal with alpha or PBR roughness with alpha. This is the one that we use from the beginning. Okay, you can see right there. Let's imagine that we need to shade the shorts, okay? Because, you know, the folds, uh, you know, the, the wranglers, uh, the guns, anything that you could put on top, it's going to occlude. So I'm going to paint different shadows, different shading shadows that will affect my final map. This is why it's important to stylize your shadows. And this is why we created this Toon Shader basic setup. Right now it's super dark, but in an optimal condition, I don't know if you can see it, the camera can show it. In an optimal condition, this brown color should be a little bit lighter from the texture itself. You can, of course, paint it over here and finally do a paint over in the shadow. So yeah, this is looking good. I'm also working in a more advanced version uh, with other settings like rim lights, like highlights, and most of the other stuff, but it takes time. Um, and I'm not fully a Substance Painter user. I just wanted to put this out because I um, was inspired by this video by 2XKO team, which they did an absolute wonderful job with the characters. And I wanted to share this Toon Shader as an inspiration for anyone else looking to, you know, stylize their stuff before exporting their textures from some Painter into the game engine itself or Blender. Now, of course, from here on, it's the entire use of the application itself. You know, you can export it, you can move the light, but you will not move the physical light. You need to move this light in order to, for you to bake it, okay? So make sure that you're going to use this light direction that we have right here. So copy my parameters again, as I mentioned before, so you can have a good starting setup, all right? So that has been everything I wanted to show you. My name is Pierre Schiller. I am a 3D animator and VFX compositor with over 20 years of experience. And I'm super glad that you're going to test this shader for Substance Painter and enjoy the show. Remember, this model will be released for free at the end of February because it's free February. <laughs> And let me just add that this is all possible thanks to our Patreons. If you're considering to become a Patreon, you will get files, shaders, making ups, and many of the industry's latest news in regards of NPR shading. And of course, you will also have Discord exclusive channel access so that you can post your work, share your progress with the current things that you're creating, and also have access to the job board which I constantly update. Please subscribe, activate the bell, and thank you for your support.